Remember, we're done with Adele, we're moving to IBM territory. Lots of IBM territory. This is an IBM 2132RX, a 3000 VA or 2700 watt UPS from uh, 2008, it seems. Which, uh, judging from the label on the battery pack connector, is quite obviously a powerware unit since PW5125 is a series of powerware UPS. I picked this thing up, it was going to be scrapped like every other UPS I own and uh, I figured it would give it a go, see what it does. I have tried pressing the power button, it doesn't seem to do anything but I think the button might actually be broken because this isn't... Eh, it doesn't really feel very good at all. This thing very obviously has batteries in it and uh, uh, it's officially been sitting for a year, so they are probably dead and scrap. They're also probably the original from 2008, but we'll find out. Finally, or rather nice, I should say, I actually got an EBM with this unit. Uh, it uh, runs in a 120 volt pack, so it's one of those silly high voltage units which I hate. But uh, it does have some mess to it. And. Uh, it seems to be a generally quite uh, sturdy and uh, um, quite nice looking unit. I've always liked the look of IBM gear. So let's uh, try and uh, get the batteries out of it and uh, see in what shape they're in and if we can maybe pair this thing up. A nice feature of this particular unit is that it actually comes with uh, an integrated Ethernet hub card. So I'm assuming you can monitor the UPS through this. And the front panel just pops off like that and it seems you know, we've got an entirely different faceplate underneath there does it do anything uh, seems to be entirely dead yep and we've got a battery disconnect there contains merchandise from China, Mexico, Thailand and the US and another data code I love how they've actually dated this. Way too few manufacturers do this because now, I, now I've at least got an idea of when this unit is from without having to install some proprietary software for it. Anyway, let's uh, get these screws out and pull the battery. Well, hello. They've even dated the battery. A 3212, so these are just three years old. I'll be down. I'm almost four. So, these might actually not be salvageable to some extent. I wonder if I also change the EBM. I mean, if that one's full of uh, 2012 batteries, I might uh, be able to salvage a few good ones. My, my experience with these uh, deeply discharged uh, batteries is that you, you can generally get some kind of use out of about half of them, as long as they're not too old. So, this might become a little bit of a battery rescue video. So, I wonder how you actually get, I suppose, to pull this thing out, though. Does it have any kind of handle? There we go. Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> These have suffered uh, quite a catastrophic failure. Wow. Okay, so this internal pack is definitely done for. Without a doubt, curious to see, they seem to be UA so these tend to be of good quality. 12 volt, 5 amp oh, so yeah, 5 amp -hour batteries tend to be on the cheap side though. <laughs> They've got a bit of a belly to them. So let's put a hopes to the EBM being in somewhat better shape. Yeah, this is almost as bad as that other giant high voltage UPS I was tinkering with a couple of months back. Just look at these. Every single one has failed catastrophically. I'm very glad they didn't wedge themselves stuck in the case. A really nice feature of this thing though is uh, this battery disconnect doesn't actually go into the unit, but rather it goes to the lead and then into that giant connector on the back there. That's beautiful. I wish more units did something like this. 
may as well just have a couple of wires on the front panel, which makes it uh, horrible to actually get the batteries out of them. I'm just curious how they failed. I mean, 2012. You know, I mean, these. And they've supposed to have been out of service for a year. How, how, how can. I mean, this is why I don't like these high voltage units. They are prone to failures of this kind. Even though this one seems to have more monitoring than most, if you had to judge from the number of pins here. Or well, maybe all of these are actually power pins. That seems so. Hang on. If you look in there, there's just two leads going in there. Or the three. Now these are obviously just the power leads going in there, so there's... There's no monitoring, there's no way for the unit to know if, uh, for instance, half the pack goes out of whack. And since the voltage tolerances on uh, light acids is so large, no wonder stuff like this happens. I mean, this is 10 batteries in series. Sheesh. Let's get the EBM apart and see if it's as bad. Alright, I think I got the cover off. Just a few screws front and back. Uh, come on. Wouldn't want to ruin this. Uh, oh, that's sturdy. Uh, these don't look anywhere near as bad. Although they are 2008. 2008. So these are original batteries, but they don't seem. To be horribly disfigured, even though these don't have any kind of monitoring either, as you can see by the pack cable, we've just got a chassis ground plus and minus. So this is an entirely stupid pack, no internal logic whatsoever. Just uh, 25 hour batteries. I wonder if there's anything in them. So I can pack out we at least don't have any signs of leakage of any kind. So let's see if there's any voltage in them whatsoever. I didn't manage to find anything when I was probing around just uh, with them connected, but uh, this back plane is a bit cryptic. There's this giant breaker thing going on, so. Well, hey, we've got something. 15 volts. That's uh, over a volt per battery. <laughs> well, let's, uh, it seems that these are connected in two separate strings. The other one's at 12 or so. That's not very encouraging. Uh, the other one, 16 volts. And another at 16, 17. Uh, these are pretty empty. Pretty empty indeed, but uh, I think I'm just going to take these apart and see if they'll take any charge at all. And mostly just for the fun of it, because they are a few years old, to say the least. But they actually are uh, Enesis Data Safe batteries, which are the same brand as uh, those giant yellow batteries I've got sitting in the other room, so they should be of pretty good quality. Worth a play around with, anyway. Made in Taiwan. Another way this battery pack comes apart seems to be quite straightforward because it's just got a single strip of tape. A lot of violent frying later. It seems we're in. Once you get to this stage, it seems to be fairly straightforward to service this pack. Batteries seem to be clumped together by really nice metal insert things like that. I like the look of that. Only really quick to assemble as long as it's not soldered. Please tell me it's not soldered. No, it's not soldered. So I've just got to unclamp those and I can disassemble the pack. I'm probably going to try and just to charge these batteries one at a time. A lot of them are just going to be dead short to have negative voltage across them. I might be beyond saving, but I think uh, maybe we might get a couple of them working good enough to at least give this unit a try. Well, hang on, there's something quite positive going on here. 
basically all of them are just about 3.6 to 3.8 volts. No reverse polarity ones in this pack. And they are all astonishingly even. Which uh, is a good sign because that means that none of them has been very violently abused. We've got one stray, which I think is that one at 4.8. But all the others are about 3.7. Come on. Now, while you aren't supposed to store your lead acid batteries at, uh, what, 0.8 volts or so per cell, this is certainly a lot better than I was expecting. I was ex expecting, like, 2 to be at 12 volts, the rest at minus uh, a lot, and just entirely ruined. But I wonder if we can't get some juice into at least a few of these. So the power supply. All right, we've got our first couple hooked up. And we're at just short of 15 volts. So, hedge your bets. Are we going to draw any current? None for starters. But I'll let them sit and cook for a while while I try to get my hands into that one. What you doing over there? Ah, oh, just doing some maintenance on the UPS. You got to get a bit heavy handed on these sometimes. Very stubborn bunch. Getting the actual UPS apart seems to be a bit more of a challenge, but I think I just figured it out because I think the UPS just comes out like that. <laughs> and there's the inverter. Does it say anything? Module 2008. Hmm. Big plastic case. <laughs> wow. This is a complete module. Would you look at that? It's like a server power supply. Well, that's certainly unique. Quite lightweight, too. Yep, and then we've just got a backline. some interconnect stuff happening. Battery connector there. Some mains input filtering. Yeah, that's really just a backplane left in there. So that's the actual unit. Oh, that's nice and compact, I must say. Hmm. I've just got to figure out how to break into that. Well, that actually seems to be easier done than said, because uh, you just seem to unsnap these and break it apart. And there we've got our inverter. This part seems to kind of integrate to the front panel, though. Not entirely certain as to how that's supposed to happen, but we'll have to figure it out along the way. Coming. This is the kind of thing you're not supposed to do one handed. Oh, <laughs> that's a fan. That's a novel solution. Wow, well, giant flex going over there. She's exposed. That's not a lot of stuff for a freaky KVA inverter. That's not a lot of stuff. What's that? One 450 volt 220 mic cap. Lots of little, or rather large, I should say, power resistors. Plastic between there. And some giant inductors. Well, this is a switch mode unit if I ever saw one. And that seems to be a well, fuse, probably a battery fuse, it's rising at 32 amps. This is a really tidy unit, I must say. Someone's put a lot of effort into laying all this out, I mean, this is a work of art. Everything's just tidy and set into rows and clean and neat. A lot cleaner than a lot of units I've, say, I've seen. 
wag. These are some rather interesting packages we've got going here. Do they say anything? 10.2 MFD. So these are going to be. Hmm. I don't know. 10 microfarads is a bit too much to be just main filter caps. So these are probably for cleaning up these switch mode outputs. Actually, this might be an online unit. Now that I think about it, there isn't any giant relay switching going on, which uh, there would be if this was a line interactive unit. Yeah, it's almost got to be an online unit. Phone will stick it there. Cheetah, IBM. Maybe this actually is an IBM OED unit, perhaps just in collaboration with Powerware, because this doesn't really look like any Powerware I've ever seen. Granted, I've never had a part a 5125 series this new, so I could be wrong. We've got to. Uh, what's that? NC caps, these look kind of dodgy. They can look quite dodgy. You would assume that they'd chosen good components. We've got a Chemicon there. And what's that? An Elna maybe? Nishicon there. And are these more NCs? No, they are. Oh, what on earth? IC caps. I... I'm not too impressed by that. I'm not familiar with uh, this manufacturer, but uh, it's not one of the major ones, that's for certain. Hmm, possible point of failure on reliability. And these... this doesn't look like a brand name cap either. Hmm... Naughty naughty, perhaps intended failure points. Beyond that, though, I mean, just look at this. Neat rotor resistors. I mean, this has been laid out by someone with severe OCD, that's for sure. Although they might just have confined all the mess to either that little control board or the underside. But... Even the control board looks quite neat, to say the least. Everything in nice, clean rows. The soldering quantum looks excellent. They just shine. Really impressed with this thing, I must say. So, I guess I've just got to figure out a way to try and power it up. Although you can't have everything because they've bodged the fuse holder. It's just stuck down with double-sided tape onto the smart slot thing there. That's not good. Okay, so I'm taking a break in the battery charging, which isn't going very well even after an hour or so, and uh, set up to test the actual unit. Since it's 10 batteries in series, it's pretty easy to calculate the lead acid voltage of it, which would be, you know, about 13 point something volts per battery. And I've checked the pin out, so we're hooked straight into the external battery connector. So, let's see what this thing will do. We might end up with a hot chassis like the other one. I'm trying a small amount of current. Is it going to do anything? All this is plastic, so I dare touch it. It doesn't seem to be very keen on doing anything at all. You would expect a thing like this to support cold starting. And here's a money shot of a failed pack. Wow. It's insane how they can excuse this kind of thing. These batteries have run so hot that they've literally melted the logos into the plastic casing. You Acer. Just look at it. The vents are just bulging up in there. Melted and corroded and I'm very surprised there isn't more battery contents inside of this thing. Because 
These are just so malformed. Ah, uh, it's insane. <sighs> All this could be avoided if it just put some basic, simple battery monitoring in this thing. I mean, it's not difficult. It's you know, it takes a, like two extra leads to measure at least the packet half intervals. It wouldn't be that much of a bother to even measure these batteries two or three in series. But no, they choose to just measure the entire string at once. And then you have crap like this happening. The amount of hydrogen gas which must have been vented through these. This thing was in an even reasonably enclosed space. It could have been very dangerous. Ridiculous. Irresponsible. This is why you want to use a low voltage unit unless you implement proper monitoring. But I suppose the UPS manufacturers have figured out that uh, if they make units which just keep exploding batteries, hey, people are going to blame the units and buy more of them. Economics. Oh, hang on. Do we have a possible cause of failure here? The solder joint for the negative terminal of a pack has failed. That's just sitting there. And judging from the discoloration of the wire, this has run quite hot. Hmm. Well, that's a bit surprising. You would, I would have expected that to be crimped, not just soldered. But it's just shoved in there and they've gooped some tin onto it. That's disappointing. See, perhaps the monitoring system of the UPS isn't entirely to blame, although it's of course partially to blame since it doesn't have any data to go on except for <laughs> the voltage coming through that solder joint. So it's probably been regulating the voltage just a tad too high. Actually, upon closer inspection, we seem to have done a better job of this than I initially thought. It doesn't excuse for failure, but uh, they do seem to run uh, the batteries into individual strings. We've got uh, this part of the connector has a positive and negative terminal, which you would just in between and connects to this row of batteries here. And then the other pair of connectors just goes to this string here and through all the batteries and into there and onto a postal terminal there this being the negative terminal being broken by the front pillar connector in order to disable the unit this is probably why it uh, wouldn't power up by just an external battery because it's obviously got some kind of uh, sensing for this half string still just makes it more of a bother to make it run on the power supply. The screen. An FF Cossack original. Yeah, this carnage is... Oh, it's damn close to that catastrophic failure we had in the old power where... I mean, where... Just to put it into perspective... I uh, got some uh, electrolyte on my hand out of one of these holes. I just got some more now actually and it isn't doing anything. I can just poke around there all day. <laughs> it, it's just water. Yeah, just water. I'm very surprised that there's actually any liquid left in these whatsoever. But yeah, Jesus. Horrid. And uh, no, they are not glued together. They've just melted together. <laughs> we actually...
are quite sturdy bonds when they weld together like that, I must give them that. Perhaps for trying to engineer and field test a new type of plastic welding. Hmm. Alright, so using the dissected pack, I've cobbled together a bodge harness for this thing and shoved a couple of probes up its arse. So we should have a chance of turning this unit on now. I'm using the split voltage option of the power supply, so let's try and power on. Seems to be doing about the same thing. No smoke, no success. No, no amount of trickery seems to be able to coax this thing into starting off of a fake battery. But uh, the manual says that it needs to be powered on at least once on AC power in order to make it able to turn on on the battery. So it might have forgotten some settings since it's been sitting for a while. So I think it would try it just on AC power with no battery or battery surrogate uh, installed. So. Let's see how many sparks we get. Well, that does sound positive, doesn't it? That's a step up, a proper step up. No battery, AC pending. Can we turn it on? There we go. We've got some power going out of it. Well, that is mighty nice. Since this seems to be an online UPS, this is basically just <laughs> a proof that it uh, just... Oh Jesus Christ, it's using 500 watts! What? That can't be right. That can't be right. <laughs> okay, take two. I'd reset the power meter. These sometimes flip out and measure weird shit which just isn't actually their reality. Uh, maybe we were exposed to treatment like that because that's a steady 40. And we've got output. So this thing does seem to be alive. Alright, uh, 233 point. 9 out of it, is not the same as in the grid. Uh, not quite, but that's what the tolerance is. And as far as the batteries go, it's looking kind of boring. Uh, one of them has actually started to drop at 20 milliamps at 30 volts, which uh, uh, is not as good as I was hoping to, but hey, at least it's something. But if you was just sitting there doing basically nothing. However, I have this little thing, which is a, a battery desulfator, which is a kind of a placebo thing sometimes, but uh, it does produce uh, high frequency, uh, high current pulses. I think it's capable of about uh, 5 amps, and it just keeps uh, shoving those into the battery. So, this might uh, help uh, push some extra current through this one that uh, isn't really wanting to do anything. So, I thought I'd give it a go. It should still work. Alright, we're all hooked up. I don't think I've ever tried this thing in a battery this dead before. So, I honestly don't know what's going to happen. I don't think there's much of any over voltage protection on this thing, so it's basically just going to spike the voltage up as high as it needs to go in order for something to start conducting, be it the uh, output rectifier diode or the battery. But uh, let's just flick the switch and see what happens. Not much at all. Although this thing should be boosting the voltage up a bit on this battery. And yes indeed, we are seeing a boosted voltage across that battery from the 13.2 volts in. So, it's doing something. We should also have a significant AC component there at 30 kilohertz. Yeah, we do. So this device still seems to work. Uh, as in it technically does what it's uh, programmed to do. But if it's actually going to do anything for a battery, well, well that remains to be seen. I've left this thing running for long times before, so I'm comfortable leaving it running overnight. 
Uh, if it worked for us, we should be seeing a lower voltage uh, in a few hours or so. It actually does have a voltage regulator in it. It's uh, all done in software. It's basically just a boost converter with no output filter. And I think it's programmed to something like 13.6 volts, but uh, since uh, the battery is basically not accepting any current, the voltage is obviously going to be above that. But it's just going to sit there at the minimum duty cycle, which is still relatively high, and uh, keep a high voltage o over it. And I think I just noticed that dropping down for a moment there. Mm, I'll check back in a while. Yeah, we definitely have a dropping voltage across that battery, it's just been a few minutes. So we might be onto something. And for those who haven't seen one of these units before, it has the waveform across the battery terminals. We've got a, uh, what's that, about 3 volts of ripple, and it's just uh, banging on with short spikes coming through that big coil you saw on the board. And uh, the lower the voltage goes, the uh, more energy it's going to pump into the coil and produce larger spikes, so this thing operates on a proper negative feedback, unless, unlike most schematics you find on the internet for these desulfated type thingies, where they just keep feeding a square wave into the thing. So, I think I'm going to write this video out with that actually, because it's probably been running on for way too long already, and I'm not looking forward to editing it. And I'll hopefully make a follow-up video once I've got to some form of working energy stored in these batteries. If ever. Either way, well, I want to see this thing run on battery. I'm not entirely convinced by it. It's behaving weird. Anyway, we'll find that out in the future. Thank you for watching. Goodbye, cruel world!